My name is Leila Abolela. I'm a Sudanese writer uh, currently living in uh, Scotland. Uh, this is my first time to visit uh, Nigeria and um, I'm very excited to be here and to be part of the Kadona Book uh, Festival. Kadona reminds me very much of uh, Sudan where I grew up. I see a lot of uh, um, similarities between North Nigeria uh, and, and Sudan, uh, mainly maybe because of the, the Muslim um, you know, population of both uh, countries. Um, the first thing I did when I came to Kadona was that I held a two-day writing workshop for women. Uh, these women were selected on the basis of uh, a sample of their writing that they had written. And um, so they were all uh, aspiring writers and uh, uh, they all had enthusiasm for writing, they all had a, a huge interest uh, for, for, for writing. And we spent uh, two days together uh, reading from their work and um, they did uh, writing assignments. Um, we looked at things like narrative, different points of view. Uh, we discussed some of the, um, the problems that um, you know, beginner writers faced. Um, uh, they were very keen to ask me about my own uh, experience with, uh, with, with writing and how it has uh, developed uh, over the years. We also read a short story by a Nigerian writer, Chibundu Onuzu, um, called Kentish Town, and uh, we discussed it. And I, I always, whenever I do um, a writing workshop, I like to discuss a published short story because I believe that uh, writing is an extension of, uh, of reading. And it's very important to read high quality literature in order to write uh, well. And I enjoyed uh, listening to Zena Balkali and her, uh, her life and her inspiration. And uh, she actually uh, you know, taught me a lot about uh, uh, what life is like in uh, North Nigeria for, for, for women and for, for men uh, as well. My journey has been uh, slow but uh, steady. Uh, I've, I've steadily made the gains. I started by writing uh, short stories and I also wrote a novel and at the beginning um, I faced a lot of rejection. There was a lot of, uh, uh, there was not really much uh, interest in, um, in publishing uh, my novel. Uh, but eventually it did get published by a small um, publisher in Scotland by University Press. Uh, and then when I won the Kane Prize for African Writing, um, this uh, really propelled me forward. It was a big um, you know, break for me. It helped me a great deal. I was able with my second novel, Minaret, to move to a, a bigger London uh, publisher. And um, I was able also to get my collection of short stories, uh, Coloured Lights, uh, published. And uh, so winning the prize really gave me um, personally, of course, a boost in confidence. And, uh, and it also gave me greater ex exposure. I remember feeling very happy that uh, Ben Okri you know, liked my writing and that he encouraged uh, me to, to write at the very beginning of, uh, of my career. Um, I think it's important to, uh, to deal with rejection and not to, as a writer, uh, not to be too disappointed by it and not to, uh, you know, to give in to the criticism that one can face maybe sometimes or the lack of enthusiasm that one can feel about the, 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 the reception of their work. Um, it's also a very competitive field at the moment and it can be sometimes uh, disheartening when you see other writers doing better than yourself and you compare yourself with other writers for example. And so uh, there's no end to, to, to how one can improve him, him or herself as a human being and that of course reflects also in, in the writing. There was a controversy about me uh, coming, uh, uh, taking part in, in the Kaaba Fest. There were calls uh, for me on the social media to, to boycott uh, the, the festival. And um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know much. I can't claim that I am, you know, I am very knowledgeable about uh, the political situation in, in northern Nigeria. So I took advice from, uh, you know, from other writers who, who I trust and who know more than me, and uh, they encouraged me to, to attend the festival. And uh, so I'm very happy that that, that I actually did come. The boycotting uh, is only successful if you are really a huge, big name. 
you know, uh, that that might make the make a boycott uh, successful. And uh, but in most cases, it is better to engage. And sometimes I have been in, uh, I have experienced with the Emirates Literary, Literature Festival, where in the very first edition, uh, Margaret Atwood boycotted the, the festival. Uh, under the assumption that uh, a book had been banned by the festival, that uh, by the, the, um, uh, a book and a writer were banned by the festival. And so she didn't attend the, the, the Emirates Literature Festival in its first edition. But later she realized that this was a misunderstanding, you know, that, that, uh, that no writer has been disinvited uh, and no book was, uh, was actually banned. So t sometimes these, uh, the calls for the boycott actually might increase the publicity for, for, for the organizers of an, an event. So that's, that's another reason, you know, that when people who call for boycotts, uh, they need to be careful about this because th that they are not achieving their aims, therefore. And um, over time, if we look really historically, we can see that actually engagement um, is, is more beneficial than boycotting. You know, sometimes when, if, if we as, as writers are always boycotting, always boycotting, we're actually making ourselves more and more marginalized and we are, um, you know, giving up the platform uh, with which we can speak from. And, uh, and so in, in that case, it's better to actually engage and speak truth to power rather than, uh, you know, hide away.